Hey what's up guys, Stefan here. Today we're looking at five more ways to improve your Logic Pro X workflow. Number one, snap to grid. What do you mean snap to grid? I already use snap to grid Stefan. This is basic stuff. What kind of whack video is this? That's what you're probably thinking and yeah. But have you ever noticed that just sometimes you're listening to your music and you, you hear something's just not quite right. Then you zoom into your region and you realize that it has not snapped to any grid. It's just, it's in no man's land. The region is in no man's land. It's just, it's happened to me too many times and I didn't know what was going on and I was getting super frustrated. And this is because by default, your regions are set to snap to relative value. But if you make this one change and set it to absolute value, you can prevent this from happening. And that's what I've been doing from now. And I'm telling you, it's made the world of difference. I will say, however, there are a couple of times that you may want to use the relative value as opposed to absolute value. For example, if I'm working with a chorus that didn't quite start on an absolute value and, and I need to copy that chorus across to another part of the song, I'm going to need to maintain the, the position that it's in. So I need the relative value as opposed to an absolute value, if that makes sense. Number two, overlapping recordings. Now, have you ever tried to record over a region that already exists? Most likely. With our overlapping recording settings, we can alter how Logic behaves when doing so. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what to do here, but I'm gonna show you what you can do and what I like to do. Go to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Recording. I like to have my MIDI when cycle is set off to merge, as this is great for laying down drums. I can lay down my kick, snare and hi-hat etc. one at a time, all in the same region. But then I like to have my MIDI set so when cycle is on, to create take folders. This way I can try out different ideas each time the loop repeats. Then come back and select which one I like. We can change the settings for audio as well and it works pretty much the same. Notice how each take had its own color. That's number three. Number three, auto colorize takes. Now I spoke about this in my vocals in Logic Pro X series. So you can check that out here if you haven't seen that. This works with both MIDI and audio takes. Head to file, project settings, recording. And we can toggle it on just here. Now remember, project settings only affect the current project. It's different to preferences. So as far as I'm aware, every time you open up a new project, you're gonna have to set this again. Unless there's a way to save it, which I don't know about. If someone knows, please let me know. Number four, freezing tracks. Now I wish someone would have told me about this a long time ago because I, I was using Logic for quite some time before I, I learned about this one. And I used to see this screen quite a lot in my early days using Logic um, when I used to throw on about two billion effects and uh, my, my, my laptop just couldn't handle it. I remember having thoughts of throwing my laptop across the room. This feature right here can help you with this big time. Freezing your tracks will convert them from MIDI along with any effects that have been applied to them to audio. And audio takes up far less computing power. Once your tracks are frozen, they are just that, frozen. You cannot do anything with them. Although it looks like it's still MIDI, when you hit play, what you're hearing is the bounce down audio version of that specific track. So this is great for saving CPU because it's no longer using the MIDI, it's no longer using the effects that are applied to, to the track either, it's all bounced down on an audio file. If you want to go back and make changes to your recording, you can do, just unfreeze it, make your changes and then freeze it again and it will create a new audio file. Some people like to do this manually by using a feature called bounce in place, whereby you take a region and you bounce just that specific region and it creates an audio file in its place. And to be fair, you get the same results. So you can do that also. However, I find bouncing place to be just a little messy, especially when you need to go back to the MIDI and make alterations. You have to then delete the bounce in place you did and do another, etc. Do this 10, 15, 20 times 
and then you're going to begin to start gathering a lot of unused audio files because i don't know if you know this but if you delete audio from the arrange window it's deleted from the arrange window but it's not deleted from the project it's still in there it's still taking up space on your computer nevertheless in the last point point five i'm going to show you how to delete all of your unused audio files this is great also for when you're recording vocals say you do 20 takes on a verse if they're, if they're doing 20 takes maybe you should get another singer but anyway let's not go there <laughs> but if if they're doing 20 takes on a on a verse and you use one take you've got 19 takes just sitting on your computer for no reason this next point point five will show you how to delete all of your unused audio files in one go number five deleting unused audio files now this one kind of crept its way in at the last minute and it kind of booted one of my other points out and reason being is just the other day i was transferring well, i just began transferring my files from my hard drive onto my new imac here and some of the the projects i had which is so huge man i'm talking 400 500 uh, gigabytes i mean not gigabytes 400 500 mb and i'm thinking there's not much to these tracks there's there's not a whole a whole lot of audio why are these files so large cut a long story short i took most of these 400 500 mb projects and whittled them down to 40 and 50 mb using the delete unused audio function so you want to head to browsers and you want to go to projects click on edit and select unused now this will select all of the audio that's not currently being used in your arrange window but still lives inside the project. We can then click on audio file and delete files. Now before you go ahead and do this, let me just warn you. If more than one project shares the same file or files, or you have alternatives of the project using the same file or files, these files will be deleted from all projects. And that's it guys. Learn anything new today? If so, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Also, remember to hit that little bell button um, for updates straight to your tablet or mobile phone. I've been Stefan and as always, happy beat making.